tastes like potato. But it's always more than that, isn't it? So just been to absolutely munch down on some food, and then come just a little bit down the road to look at some beach. Those waves are going pretty uh, gung ho. But uh, we're in Lanzarote and uh, may do some cooking, may not, but definitely going to do a lot of eating. Especially when you've got a lot of walking to do to capture those sort of views. Lanzarote wasn't even on my radar before we booked the flights. The Canary Islands were, but not to any huge extent. But I think we may have chosen it because it was fairly cheap. Not because it was representative of any of the other islands at all. Apparently they're quite varied. But it was the first to be settled. So perhaps it is representative to some extent. But we didn't go to any other islands. What we did do, however, to get an overview of the land was to drive up to the cliffs that overlooked the little town that we were staying in. That is just... Not exactly the way to settle your lunch, that's for sure. This is a surefire way of making me feel very sick. Well, there's, uh, there's vertigo. Oh, yo, yo. That there is where we are staying. Let's turn my stomach upside down. And this is the sweet ride slash ugliest car in the world the old nissan duke damn bro look at it it's full on attack mode so when you're driving you can actually see <laughs> the headlights are so prominent you can see the headlights in the uh in the windscreen this is a minging car and it doesn't actually even drive that well it kind of it's, it's got very few redeeming features apart from the fact that it managed to make it up here So I'm off to look at the viewpoint for the other island. Apparently it's very, very close to here. So it's crazy. Didn't, we saw it before, but this is the entirety of the next island. It's a weird one, it almost looks fake. <laughs> this is... It feels like we should be in like a helicopter or something, but in the same breath it doesn't, yeah really doesn't feel that high up. So where is Lanzarote? I had not really heard of it before I went there, but it's an island that's a part of the Canary Islands, which is also a part of Spain. So it means it's in the EU. And it's just off the coast of uh, sort of like Western Sahara, Morocco area. And the weather sort of reflects that. It's got almost like a desertous climate. It's 22 degrees, feels quite dry, and the landscape sort of looks like that as well. And it was quite windy while we were there. So it's certainly got like this subtropical sort of climate, but a lot drier than I would expect of a subtropical climate. So the island itself was formed by volcanic activity. It's apparently very, very old, settled a long, long time ago. And the island's been changing ever since with continued volcanic activity. The last thing sort of happening, I think around about in the 1700s and displacing like a lot of people in the process. But what you would think would be a really rough, barren, inhospitable landscape is actually quite productive. They grow wine and it's also a bit of a potato hotspot, but we'll go through that later. The next morning though, we decided that an Airbnb feast was definitely on the menu. And so we headed into the main city of Arrecife, I think I said that right, and got the goods that we needed. Just going to go to the Escaderia and get some fish. Drove all the way into the city for this. Big old 20 minute drive. This island is tiny. All right, let's roll. My level of understanding of this situation was about three out of 10. So we got this bad boy. So I ended up with eel, because it wasn't actually yeah. that much on offer. But uh, I got there in the end. Beautiful. And he was a very nice man. But by the end of it, I was ready to go to the supermarket, pick up a few more ingredients. And uh, basically, I was just winging it at this point.
The Timonfaya lava fields are interesting. 200 square kilometers of desolation, previously the home of about 20 villages and productive farmland. The main attraction was a bus tour only, and I can sort of see why, but it sort of sanitizes the whole experience. I'd recommend instead going to the volcanoes in the surrounding area for a hike. That was where I got the drone shot from earlier. Get yourself really lost. The heat coming out of that hole there is seriously intense. I'm cooking my legs. <laughs> Jesus. That's pretty spectacular though. Spectacular in a sense that it's incredibly desolate, barren, inhospitable. Apparently there's a chicken that's roasted in the ground, but this place is absolutely heaving. So there's no way I'm gonna wait around just to eat chicken roasted in the ground when I can have hungy back in New Zealand. Call me cheap, but sometimes the best things on these sorts of trips are free, and this green lake was one of them. It's actually a volcanic crater, and it presents quite a striking uh, scene with the blue sea, the black sand, and the green lake. It's an algae bloom, which is why it's so green. It's toxic, so don't go in there unless you can't want to come out with some sort of disease or three eyes or something like that. But it was fantastic, and nearby there was some pretty delicious food as well. Fresh prawns, a bit of fish and some potatoes and some salad. Really, really simple, super delicious. I still think I can do a better job on the potatoes though. And then you come across one of the delightful surprises of these sorts of trips. This was just on the side of a highway. Um, the busy area, the lava fields with the bus ride, not so flash. It's useful for some, but we're not really conditioned to being carted around by a bus. But here, the salt flats, it's just one of those examples of humans being artful with their industry. And the views are breathtaking, in a way reminding me of Moroccan leather tannery from a few videos back. And the drone, well, it just takes things to another level. Same with the beach here, it was just spectacular. I was on a bit of a buzz and took it all the way back home. And I can really start calling it home because it, I just settle in so quickly. I'm at a stage of life where I understand the value of silence. In this video I just have one kid, now I have two. And looking back, cooking in near silence with a wine while Felix slept, just to make a sauce to eat for the next day, I understand past me completely. Even though the kitchen had most things, it didn't have a blender, but we won't dock points because I couldn't have used it anyway. Now the whole point of this was to try and extract the super sweet flavor from the pepper. And I boiled it whole and then ran it under a cold tap and removed the skin and then sort of blended it with the blunt side of the knife, just sort of like mushed it. And the whole thing was just try and infuse it with a whole lot more flavor using the pepper's sweetness as a foundation. So I sauteed some garlic. And then mashed that and then got it all mixed in with the local salt. And the result should be a punchy sauce that should work well with the eel. But its value is worth more than flavor. The value was also in the silence that it was created in. And so it was looking pretty delicious. And then the next morning I decided to give a little tour of the Airbnb. It's fairly generic fare, lots of sort of beachy looking things, tassels, motivational quotes on the wall, but it served its purpose. I'm editing right now, and sometimes I see a town like this one, and it screams for a really laid on thick Spanish guitar. This is Teguise, it deserves a matching song. It's incredibly unusual seeing a Christmas tree like this, with this sort of weather. It reminds me of home, weirdly enough. Just way nicer buildings. New Zealand definitely doesn't look as nice as this. Wow. 
broad strokes is how to define this place. Bold, broad flavors, bold, broad colors, high contrast, and pretty effective. It is nearly December and it is properly hot. Bloody hell. I just bought another plate. I really like this one. It's probably the most interesting one I've bought in a while. A lot different to the one in Latvia. But uh, it'll serve an excellent purpose. The place is so strange, like half retirement village, half surfer dude. <laughs> Something for everybody. There's a lot of shit here. We have to talk about these potatoes, papas arrugadas, Canarian potatoes, and what you're about to see me doing it is entirely guesswork. I sort of had a quick look thinking that I would find a specific breed of potato, but it's not about that, it's about the way they're cooked. So this display in guesswork came out to be relatively close to what I expected but there were some adjustments that I probably needed to make. But they were still delicious. So next up we're gonna make the Canarian potatoes. I'm not 100% sure how to do this. I think it's just meant to be very, very salty water. Um, I'm gonna get a little bit of, I tasted something maybe touch acidy on there. Maybe it was like lemon, not sure. But I've got vinegar, so I'm just gonna use vinegar. And um, so yeah, I'm gonna boil a pot of really, really salty water with these potatoes I got, where are they? These things. And um, yeah, gonna boil them until they're tender. And then to get that saltiness, I'm just gonna pour off some of the water and then just keep boiling it until the water dries up. And just roll the potatoes around in it. I can't see any other way to do that particular thing. But um, I'm hoping that's right. So crazy with that. All of that. Boil, my little ones, boil! Don't want to talk into the potatoes. Here I've got this stuff uh, called Ruda. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it tastes like. But it is green and it was in the edible herb section. So it's going to go on there. It looks roughly like parsley, I can't imagine it tasting too different and I think it'll go well with what I've got. The only other thing that is making me nervous is the fact that I've got the fish in the frying pan and this place doesn't have a spatula. So hopefully it cooks itself off. Not bad. Well... About all I can say for the fish is it's cooked. So after that horror show of the fish, this is the plate I bought. Um, it looks like uh, a child made it, but I kind of like it. I like the color, I like the very, very odd shape, and I like the way my potatoes turned out. They look very wrinkly, just like the pictures. So here it is, delicious. We'll give it a go. It's quite a firm fish, the eel. Tastes pretty good. It's not as muddy as river eel. And you know what? These potatoes are perfectly wrinkly. I'm quite happy with those. The sauce is delicious as well. It's not exactly like what I tasted the other day, but I say it's a fairly good representation. I'm happy. That's a really weird flavor. There's like a properly weird flavor. This, the herb. Ultimately, I think the flavors were good, but um, not a big fan of eel, I don't think. So fatty. It was almost like um, salmon texture in the amount of fattiness that it had, but it was just incredibly fishy. Not like salmon fishy, which is like oily and sort of, 
got a more sort of like sweeter flavor. This is just very like fish, fish, which is a bit, which is a bit much, I think. But I like the potatoes. I really like the sauce. I'll probably do the potatoes again sometime. So yeah, I'd say that's seven and a half out of 10 success. So now that you've seen that, this is how it's actually done. Cada día doy las gracias a esta vida. Cada día me nace nueva melodía. Yo sabía que algún día. The water is like super warm and it's November. Now we're in the Northern Hemisphere. Had a little swim in the thick of the... Yeah, not bad. Heavy, slow waves. Caught like three for body surfing, but they just roll on so slow. We liked Stigisa so much we went back at sunset. It's quiet, empty streets, just the one small area with locals having a drink. A completely different personality and I feel like I can use it to draw an analogy to describe the rest of Lanzarote. A place of extremes, barren wasteland or thriving production, desertous plains or grand cliffs, old people everywhere or entirely surfers. It's got a bit of Mexico, a little bit of Europe, a little bit of Africa all combined. I mean, just look at this cactus garden. We took it all in on our last day, hitting town after town, beach after beach, and missing a whole bunch of stuff that we really wish we had seen, and ending it somewhat aptly at this ghost ship in the middle of an industrial area. Here, on the edge, it feels a little sink or swim. The wind was so strong, I almost lost my drone changed direction and suddenly I couldn't get it back on shore but I persevered and it survived and it feels like that's what Lanzarote does it survives through volcanoes and harsh weather it's really quite amazing peculiar little place we've got to go back <laughs> <laughs>